This is Memorial Day. And we keep coming back here. And we keep doing this. And we'll keep doing this to honor those who have fallen. That is why we are here. We are here to honor those who have fallen. So, as you're here with me today, um, first of all, let's just thank goodness that we got ourselves a fairly decent one. We know uh, that there's probably going to be some weather coming through here, so we're going to be, as they say uh, when I was in boots, we're going to be br we're going to be brief, we're going to be uh, concise, and then we're going to be gone. Okay. So I'm honored to have here with me uh, some folks uh, that are representative of the entire congressional delegation as well as uh, the new administration here in the mayor's office. And even though this is a solemn event, I'd encourage you to welcome them. I'm so honored uh, to stand b before you this morning, and as I said, we're brief, we're concise, we're gone for those of you who are here with us. Uh, we have our own um, Larry Salt, who's with us. Uh, please join me uh, for those who are uniformed, those who are retired, face the colors, colors face, and we will first open with the national anthem. Present. Heart! First speaker today is uh, from the Mayor Mulvaney Stanick's office. Coming with Mayor Mulvaney Stanick's remarks um, is Chief of Staff Aaron Jacobson. Aaron, ja Aaron Jacobson. Good morning, everyone. Can you hear me okay? Okay. On behalf of Mayor Mulvaney Stanek and our whole office, I want to thank you all for inviting us to join you in honoring the millions of Americans who made the ultimate sacrifice and service to our country. It is truly a privilege to be here with you. Sure. Thank you for asking me to do that. Let me adjust, maybe. Okay. How's it? I'll look to you to give me the thumbs up or thumbs down. Is that better? Okay. Oh, it's no problem. No sorries there. It is a privilege to be here with you to reflect on Vermont's and Burlington's proud tradition of military service, and especially on those who gave their lives to protect the freedoms we hold dear. On Memorial Day, I think of those who served, and I also think of their families and loved ones. I think of my own father, who fought in Vietnam, who enlisted because even at that very young age of 18, yearned to find a way to contribute and to be in service of others. My father came home from Vietnam with a shattered leg and many medals, but also with trauma that to this day he works to heal from. So today is a solemn day for him, and I know for so many of you. But Memorial Day is not just solemn. It can also be hopeful. 
This day allows us a moment to pause and reflect on the shared values our country is willing to fight for, freedom, justice, and equality. We reflect on how grateful we are to those who've sacrificed in that fight, and also on how we can all contribute to making these ideals a reality. We stand here in a beautiful, diverse, and vibrant community, which is a testament to the progress we've made. But work lies ahead. As we remember those who have perished, I hope we can all find ways to contribute that truly reflect the principles they defended. This means advocating for comprehensive support for veterans and helping ensure they can access the benefits to which they are entitled, whether that's health care, job training, or housing. But it also means contributing to our communities in ways that help build a future worthy of their sacrifice. I suspect that many, although looking here, probably all of you, already do that work. And I know there are many soldiers here today, as, as well as other public servants. Thank you for your service and your contributions, and I'm grateful to each and every one of you who pays tribute, not just with words, but with actions. We need you. In conclusion, it's an honor to stand here with you today in this beautiful place. I hope we don't get rained on, but I'll be, what is it, brief and concise, and then I'll be out of here. May we never forget or take for granted the soldiers who sacrificed so dearly for our freedom, for justice, and for equality. And we may, may we all strive to be a nation, a state, and a city worthy of their shared legacy. I wish you all a good Memorial Day. Thank you. Thank you, Aaron Jacobson, from our new administration, um, under Mayor Mulvaney Stanick's uh, office. We do have our next remarks are being offered to us by um, is it uh, Catherine uh, Becker, uh, Catherine Becker Van Hayes from Senator Sanders' office. Sorry about that. Catherine uh, Becker Van Hayes. Thank you. Thanks for coming. I really appreciate it. Good morning, everybody. Um, on behalf of Senator Sanders, thank you all for being here. Thank you all for taking the time to recognize Memorial Day for its true meaning. Um, we've been fortunate this weekend to see a little summer sunshine and a little summer weather, but it's especially important that we're here today honoring what Memorial Day is really all about. Um, to the, any of the Gold Star families here today, veterans and their families, Thank you for your service and your sacrifice. Senator Sanders is down in Middlebury and Virgins today at their, at their ceremonies and is sorry that he can't be here today, um, not far from his home, um, but really is so grateful for everyone who has served, who continues to serve, and who has made the ultimate sacrifice in service to our nation. Um, as Aaron shared as well, now is more than ever is a time when coming together in service of our community is so important. Um, it can be so easy to find ourselves siloed off and sticking to the places where we're comfortable. But coming out, being in community with other people is so incredibly important and recognizing and honoring the sacrifice of all those that Memorial Day is really all about is just so important today. On behalf of Senator Sanders and our whole staff, um, in addition to being the Senator's State Director, I also um, handle his Veterans and Military Policy. Uh, I'm the daughter of a uh, military veteran, a Navy veteran, and it's been an honor of my career to do this work. One of the best parts of our job in the Senate office is our casework services that we provide to all Vermonters who need help with the federal government. As Senator Sanders always says, we wish we didn't have to have these folks in our office. We wish the federal government just worked for you, but we know that that's just not the case. And so when it comes to veterans benefits, military benefits, it is not just our job, but truly an honor to help all Vermonters get the benefits to which they are entitled. So if anyone here today, or you know someone who you think, you know, they, they deserve benefits and they haven't gotten them, please call our office. Um, I know for, 
from personal experience how valuable this is. Um, when I graduated from college and began my work in a congressional office, my father had never received his medals, and he was entitled to seven of them. And so at, as a staff assistant, I worked uh, with a caseworker in our office to get my father his medals. And um, it was truly one of the most meaningful experiences that I shared with him to be able to get him those medals. And so I hope that our office can do that for any of you, for anyone you know, whether it is those medals, whether it is health care benefits, disability compensation, please know that we are here for you. Um, you sacrificed, you served, and it is our honor to give back to you. So on behalf of Senator Sanders, thank you all for being here today to recognize all of those who sacrificed in service to our country. Thank you. Thanks, Katie. I appreciate you being here. And um, say hi to Bernie for us. <laughs> Next, we have uh, from uh, Congresswoman Becca Balance Office um, remarks that will be offered by um, Owen Doherty. That's the Military and Veterans Affairs a military and Veterans Affairs Coordinator, Owen. Thank you, Mark. Hi, folks. My name is Owen Doherty, and I work in Congresswoman Balance, Vermont office. Thank you so much for being here today. I also want to extend a deep gratitude to anyone that served our nation, and also a deep gratitude to my father who served in the U.S. Army. Congresswoman sends her regrets today. She's down in Wilmington, but I uh, wanted to share the following statement. Today, as we gather to commemorate Memorial Day, we honor and remember the brave Americans who have made the ultimate sacrifice to protect our nation. Memorial Day is about paying tribute to the courage, dedication, and selflessness of those who have served while recommitting to a future that upholds the ideals they fought for. America's fallen soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines, and Coast Guard served the cause of the nation striving for justice where the rights and dignity of all are protected. They serve to protect the ideal of a nation where every voice is heard. Let's honor them by continuing the fight for a more perfect union where no one is left behind. We must take the time to recognize the sacrifices of their family back home in Vermont, the mothers and fathers, spouses, and children who carry the weight of their absence and support our troops from home. We owe it to them to uplift our veterans beyond Memorial Day, providing the, co the care and resources they need and deserve. Landmark bipartisan legislation like the PACT Act is the most significant expansion of benefits and services for toxic exposed veterans in more than 30 years. More than 1 million PACT Act related claims have now been granted, which means more than 900,000 veterans and survivors across all 50 states and U.S. territories are now receiving new service related disability benefits. This is our obligation to properly prepare and equip the troops we send into harm's way to care for them and their families when they return home and honor the memories of those who have served our country in uniform. Today, I'm always reminded of the principles that unite us as Americans. We take for granted phrases like liberty and justice for all. These must be the values that we strive to make in reality. We honor the memory of fallen heroes by continuing their fight and working towards a better America for generations to come. I extend my deepest gratitude to the veterans of Vermont and across our nation. Your sacrifice and unwavering dedication to our shared values inspire us all. We will never forget the lives lost and the, family, and the Vermont families changed forever. Thanks so much, everybody. Thank you, Owen. You're probably wondering uh, who's representing the, um, the office of Senator, uh, Senator Welsh. And I was just informed, we were just informed this morning that there was um, uh, COVID that outbroke, uh, an outbreak I guess, and so part of that is um, they're dealing with it. So this is a good time for us to pray for them and uh, speak, just continue to lift them up. So what we'll, we're gonna do is we're gonna move on. Uh, I told you about Larry Salt, an accomplished musician that we have here with us and a longtime supporter of the veterans uh, community. Uh, Larry has uh, for us a special selection hymn to the fallen. Larry?
that after Normandy built bridges to Berlin. So I'd like to honor them also. Into the Fallen by John Glenn. <laughs> You know, today we gather on this sacred Memorial Day, a day when we can come together as a nation to remember and honor the courageous men and women who've made the ultimate sacrifice in the defense of our freedom. Now, now, as a minister and a tireless advocate of racial justice, as well as an ardent slavery abolitionist and proud commander of the Veterans of Foreign Wars here, this post, 782, I stand before you with a heart overflowing with passion and a spirit ignited by the urgent call for justice and equality. Memorial Day is a solemn reminder of the immense price that has been paid for the liberties we hold dear. We pay tribute to those heroes who throughout history have laid down their lives on the altar of freedom, believing in the ideals upon which this great nation was founded. In the fabric of our nation's history, there are threads woven with the blood and sweat of men and women who fought valiantly for the principles of freedom, justice, and the pursuit of happiness. They fought not only for the liberties we hold dear, but also for the ideals, the ideals of equality and dignity for every person regardless of the color of their skin. Those, those ideals have often been abandoned, left to be largely aspirational uh, throughout history. Let's be clear, the sin of racism has stained the very foundation of this great nation. It has led to the oppression and the marginalization of our black brothers and sisters the desecration of the indigenous lands, and the discrimination against people of all races and ethnicities. On this day of, remember, of, of remembrance, we must acknowledge that the fight for racial justice is inextricably bound. It's linked to the sacrifice of our fallen heroes. 
They gave their lives not only for a country, but a vision. A vision where every American, regardless of their background, is treated with fairness, with dignity, and with respect. In fact, there's never been a war or a conflict where black Americans did not serve. Today, let us not merely offer lip service to the memory of our fallen heroes, but let us, as agents of change, as warriors for justice, and as instruments of reconciliation, let us challenge the systems of oppression that perpetuate inequality. Let us be the ones who break the chains of discrimination and ignorance that binds our society. As we stand here today, we must confront this painful truth head on. Slavery born out of greed and human exploitation stained the very soul of this nation. It tore families apart, dehumanized our fellow uh, human beings and denied them basic rights that we cherish. The scars of that abhorrent institution still reverberate through the generations as we witness the persistent racial disparities that continue to plague our society. Our fight persists to this day. A fight against systemic racism, a fight against injustice, a fight against inequality that permeates every facet of our lives. This fight that it demands an unwavering commitment, our tireless advocacy, and our relentless pursuit of a better world, a more perfect union. We are called to be agents of change, to be the voices for the voiceless, and to actively work towards dismantling the structures that perpetuate racial discrimination. Let us honor the memory of those fallen heroes by living out their legacy, by striving for a society where every person is treated with dignity and respect and equality. Let us challenge the narratives of hatred and division and foster spirit, a spirit of compassion, understanding, and unity. Let us be the catalysts for change, leading by example in our communities and standing firmly against racism and discrimination in all its forms. Now, I personally, I've witnessed the power of camaraderie. I've witnessed the power of service. I've witnessed the power of sacrifice. We come together, we do, regardless of our backgrounds, to defend the principles upon which this nation was built. Today, let us extend the unity beyond the boundaries of our organization, reaching out our hands to join with like-minded individuals and groups who share our vision of a more just and equitable society. Today, as we pay tribute to the fallen, let us not only remember their sacrifices, but also recommit ourselves to the unfinished work that they have left behind. Let us be the torchbearers of their legacy, carrying the flame of justice, equality, and love into the future. May their spirits guide us in our journey towards a more inclusive and a compassionate society. May we never forget the names and the stories of those who have given their lives in the service of our nation. And may their sacrifice inspire us to be agents, agents of change, catalysts, catalysts for justice, and bearers, bearers of hope, so we can have a more inclusive future. Now, you probably noticed, but as a Baptist minister, 
I'm reminded of the words of a prophet, and his name was Micah. And Micah said, what does the Lord require of you but to do justice? To love kindness and to walk humbly with your God. We cannot claim to honor the memory of those who gave everything if we don't confront the deep-seated injustices that still plague our society today. May God grant us the strength to confront injustice, the wisdom, the wisdom to advocate for change, and the compassion, the compassion to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. Now may God bless you all, and may God continue to bless this remarkable nation that we call the United States of America. God bless you all. I have a special guest who's coming. Uh, Sister uh, Sue Brennan is coming to us. Uh, before you come up, Sue, come on, come on up, come on up here. Um, special, special guest. Now, Sue, she's been a member of the VFW for like all. I mean, the the um, VFW post 782 to 782's auxiliary. Come over here and stand closer to me. I like you. I like you. Come closer, closer, closer. <laughs> so, so uh, 20 years, over 20 years, my sister has been here. And she's leaving us, she's leaving us, and we wanted to just, it's so important to us, you are so important to us, that we wanted to acknowledge you before you left. Where am I going? I, I, I know you, um, you, you've got a couple of, um, well, this, I understand that this is, you're getting ready to step down as the commander there, your husband of Vietnam, and a VFW life member, Bob, yeah. um, you supported the veterans community in many ways through um, the auxiliary programs and the, I think it's been about 10 years or so you've been the president, right? So yeah. today is, is her last day. Um, this is the last public event as the auxiliary president. Let's be clear, she's not leaving okay leaving. okay uh so on behalf of the veterans and the auxiliary members of the uh, vfw post 782 um we thank you uh we thank you for your service uh we thank you from the bottom of our hearts i will be around i'm not i'm not leaving <laughs> Sue Brennan. Today, we are here to honor and remember the soldiers who sacrificed their lives for our freedom. Today, I am honoring my uncle, who is an MIA. His plane crashed into the Gulf of Tonkin, which is North Vietnam, and remains were never recovered. I will always remember him on this day. Thank you for remembering our heroes. Thank you, Sue. Uh, we appreciate you. And now, as we come to the end of this commemoration, I want to bring back um, Larry So. Please join us for TAPS. Colors, face, present, arms. This concludes our Memorial Day commemoration.
Uh, on this Memorial Day, I would hope that we would all remember veterans that have taken their own lives. Today, three veterans will take their life. Uh, on an average uh, year, three per day do that. Um, our military exposes young men to the horrors of war and does very little to reestablish them in the community afterwards. I'd also like to point out there's a facility in, uh, near Camp Johnson in, in uh, the fort called Josh's House. It was created by a mother of a young veteran who took his life. And they support veterans. Any veteran is welcome with open arms. They, they do support, give them support that they can. But they do need the help of the local communities and the federal government financially to keep this program going. So I hope you'll have some interest. Check out Josh's house in Colchester. Thank you. Well, thank you, Charlie, for being here. Uh, you guys are always, Town Meeting TV is always here. Thank you very much. And Memorial Day is just an incredibly important day that we remember those who, who died, you know, defending our country and about the families, those who lost loved ones, uh, people who, you know, 18, 19, 20 years old, through the whole life range, young people, old people, so many died and sacrificed for our country. And when they see the ultimate sacrifice, uh, the impact they've had on so many people and their families. And so it's a day to really be thankful for people who have served our country, have given their lives and their families who have had to go on lives without them. And the best we can do is to celebrate that by living our lives to the fullest, contributing to your community, helping each other giving people a second chance and pay attention to civics and engage in government activity, civic responsibility to make sure we keep our democracy alive and well. So thank you for being here. Thanks. Hi there. I'm uh, Representative Bob Hooper from Chittenden 18. Uh, my father, two uncles, myself, all served. Uh, everybody made it back. It's a good thing. Um, however, sitting in the legislature, I realized that the state of Vermont does not do much for its veterans, and I'd like to see that change. And I'm introducing legislation for actually the six years that I've been down there that uh, should try to rectify that. Tough budget years, people who don't have a history of service, makes it hard to do. So if you're out there watching this and you're talking to your legislator, say, uh, think veteran, and we'll go from there. Thanks.